fanatics. It's getting dark out there. I hope you don't mind that certain someone in the distance. I'm sure they're just trying to listen as well, and so be it. Welcome back to the Residence of Evil. I am here once again to share with you some more thoughts, theories, and insights on Resident Evil 8 Village, as there's something strange I'd like to discuss. Since the very first trailer, we've examined the many inspirations behind RE Village, which include Mia's folktale, Dracula connections, and the inclusion of several creatures from Slavic and Romanian folklore. Recently, we've received a wealth of new information in the form of the RE Village gameplay showcase and the Resident Evil Village Maiden demo. There is so much to explore here, especially in regards to Alcina and Castle Dimitrescu. Tonight, we will be analyzing the hidden meanings of the RE Village demo and the new gameplay showcase. As brief as it is, the demo contains many clever allusions to the Dracula novel. It also implies that Elcina Dimitrescu is very strongly inspired by the Hungarian countess Elizabeth Bathory, as we'll discuss very soon. There is so much to be explored tonight, from Bathory connections to Dracula inspirations to a few curious screenshots being shared on the Resident Evil Twitter account. I can only hope that our guest doesn't get too excited and perhaps we should be concerned. After all, the smell of death is in the air. Let us begin. Brace yourself, as this one's going to get bloody. Underground torture chamber. Wine fermented with the blood of maidens. Consuming blood to maintain one's vitality. These are the trademarks of a Hungarian countess who is thought to be the most destructive female murderer of all time. The Ari Village demo draws very heavily from the sinister methods of Elizabeth Bathory who tormented and slaughtered a staggering number of young women in the late 1500s. While many urban legends claim that she murdered hundreds, her actual kill count was somewhere between 30 and 60. Her many victims were servants in her own castle, as well as young peasant girls that she would lure in from the surrounding villages. Despite the constant disappearances of her maidens, the peasants knew not to challenge her noble status. This allowed her onslaught to carry on for decades without being investigated. Her insatiable bloodlust sparked a plethora of dark rumors about her over time. These include bathing in the blood of her dead maidens and drinking their blood to keep her young. She is also sometimes thought to be the primary inspiration for Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's interesting to note that there is no hard evidence of Bathory's blood drinking or blood bathing rumors actually ringing true nor is there sufficient proof of her influencing Dracula, despite the shared elements between them. But much like most tall tales, these popular legends emerge from little inklings of truth. A couple of curious accounts from the author, Kimberly Kraft, will help us explain the Bathory trademarks in the RE Village demo. We'll start by unpacking the rumors of her behaving like a vampire, drinking and bathing in blood. Bathory was incredibly harsh to her maidens, and extremely critical of their work. She would use their slightest blunders as an excuse to bring hell upon them with no warning. She would stab her maidens with sewing needles had she noticed any error with their stitches or slice up their faces had they cut up fruits unevenly. What are you trying to do? Turn my room into a pigsty? I had the burn! Oh. Many similar stories would spread of her brutalizing her servants. Perhaps the most widely believed account goes like this. One of Bathory's maidens was brushing her hair one day, but to her dismay, a thick strand of her hair had been ripped out by her maiden's doing. A seething sense of anger consumed Bathory as she faced her servant. She struck the maiden's face so hard that blood spurted out of the girl's nose and landed on her own face. As she peered into the mirror thereafter, she saw something so wonderful and miraculous. 
where the maiden's blood had spattered, her wrinkles had faded away. It was the maiden's blood that had revitalized her youth. From here, it's understandable how this story would spiral into hyperbole, into legends of Bathory bathing in maiden's blood and even drinking it. The fear of vampires reached a new peak in the 1700s after she had died, which continued to twist and mutate the original tale of the maiden's blood. Happenings like this classic story are also present to an eerily similar degree in Castle Dimitrescu. It's crucial to note that all of Bathory's servants, both low-ranking peasants and the daughters of nobles, were female, again, much like Castle Dimitrescu of Ari village. This file describes how the castle is governed entirely by women. The next page tells of one maid's face being sliced up for some menial mistake, just like Bathory would do to her own. It's fascinating just how many connections there are between Alcina and Countess Bathory. Alcina's collaborators seem to use any excuse to beat, slice, burn, or maim their maidens into a bloody mess, just as Bathory and her collaborators would do. With this file, they are resurrecting the classic stories of her servants' mistakes in a rather faithful manner. On top of this, more homages to Bathory are brutally illustrated in the castle's torture chambers. Let us visit the cellar beneath the castle. Many of Bathory's torture methods can be seen in the dungeon beneath the castle. Her methods included cuffing the maidens to medieval torture chairs, ripping their mouths apart with her bare hands, tying them down to spiked gurneys, beating them with spiked iron clubs, and even burning their bare flesh. She would scorch the maidens' insides by heating up metal rods and rivets, which also looks to be the case for several of these victims in Castle de Mitrescu. Their entrails are completely charred and blackened, most likely due to burning. She also loved trapping them inside suspended barrels and cages with spikes on their interiors and rocking them around. She would use this and several other methods, such as compressing her servants in Iron Maidens to extract their blood. This game file describes how Lady Dimitrescu harnesses the blood of young maidens to enrich her wine. Alcina probably consumes this wine to prolong her life, just as Bathory intended to. Speaking of cellar, the original Bathory Manor House has been replaced by a wine business today. The same cellars that once endured so much brutality and bloodshed are used today to store wine barrels with her own branding. Some of these wines bear a Bathory blood label and are sold in the town overlooked by the castle. And the wine is crimson red, of course, which matches the Sanguis Virginis description of Lady Dimitrescu's wine, which roughly translates to blood red, like a pure maiden's blood, which is precisely what Bathory was rumored to bathe in. Resident Evil Village seems to be taking the horrific killings of Bathory and the wine cellar that succeeds her to this very day and merging the two ideas into one unique narrative. In terms of historical adaptations, Capcom is no stranger to capitalizing on these tall tales, often entertaining the darkest imaginings of historical or folkloric characters. A very similar case of historical demonization can be seen in Oda Nobunaga, a figure who is nicknamed Demon King for some of his worst massacres in feudal Japan. But in Capcom's Onimusha, his depiction is that of a literal Demon King who commands a demon army, perhaps as a dark metaphor for his mercilessness. Similarly, in the case of Elizabeth Bathory in Resident Evil Village, Capcom is bringing those nightmarish rumors to life. The elements of vampirism, torture, and the modern Bathory wine barrels all coexist here in Castle Dimitrescu. Let's examine this maiden's diary once more. Given that the writer of this file had only recently begun work as a maid, it only begs the question, how was she recruited as a servant of the castle to begin with? Was she lured in by Alcina or her daughters? And is she originally from the nearby village? This would also match the methods of Elizabeth Bathory, as she would often invite young girls into servitude from the peasant community surrounding the castle. You will find me someone and bring her here. Yes, Countess. Similarly, Alcina would need to replace her maidens quite often as she constantly drains them of their blood 
killing them. While most of these maidens are probably drained of their blood for winemaking, it seems that some of them hold special value for Lady Dimitrescu. This is supported by another file in the castle by an unknown writer. It lists three candidates and 12 rejects without any context, but given the verbiage, it seems that the young girls are deemed compatible or incompatible with some process, and in the narrative of Resident Evil, this is all but confirmed to be viral experimentation. We'll get back to this file later on. So we've examined many, many strong parallels between Bathory and Castle Dimitrescu. It's time to dive deeper into the second prominent theme here, Dracula. Let's explore some of these new Dracula connections. Keep in mind that there are so many here, and certainly enough for a more comprehensive video, especially when the full game is released. Let's start with this game file, in which a maiden is yelled at for opening the window. This is a reference to how the Brides of Dracula, as well as Dracula himself, have an aversion to sunlight, much like the traditional Romanian Strigoi. Speaking of the Brides, Notice just how closely these three vampiric women resemble the Brides of Dracula, even matching the distinct colors of their hair, which are critically important. Notice the two brunettes and one blonde. In the Dracula novel, as well as in many of the spin-offs that followed, the fair-haired bride is the senior of the three, usually having either blonde or auburn hair. She typically holds an elite status over the other two. In the showcase footage, the blonde bride takes a spotlight. She trembles with delight at the thought of a man's blood. This is paying homage to the scene in Dracula where the brides first encounter Jonathan Harker in the novel. All three of them are overwhelmed with lust. None of the brides were loved by Dracula, and so their sexual urges had reached a boiling point, and so did their hunger for flesh and blood. Much like Ari Village, the novel fuses together sexual desire and bloodlust into one unique urge, a vampire trope which Dracula popularized for decades to come. After all, the titillating nature of vampires is nothing but a metaphor for sexual excitement, as Bram Stoker has translated the act of kissing one's neck into the act of feasting on their blood. In the novel, the two with dark hair step aside stating, yours is the right to begin, to the blonde, indicating her elite status. She then begins to smother Jonathan Harker. Ethan is essentially playing the part of Jonathan Harker here, with a very similar amusement coming from the blonde bride when she says, man's blood. Alcina's daughters share a similar craving for male attention as the brides, which is exacerbated by the fact that all the Dimitrescu servants are women again combining the themes of sexual suppression in Dracula with the fact that Bathory's servants were entirely female. In the novel, the two brunettes are described as having high aquiline noses like the Count, implying that these two are Dracula's real daughters. So the blonde bride is likely the true wife or consort of Dracula, which is a concept that several pop culture adaptations have remixed and taken further such as the Castlevania anime. It only makes us curious whether or not the blonde will hold a special elite status over the other two with darker hair in Ari Village. All three of the brides seem to be Alcina's daughters here, yet it is unknown whether or not they are actually related by blood. Since there are three candidates in this file, it's totally possible that she artificially selected three women who are compatible with some sort of vampire virus and the same three are the brides within the castle as her daughters. Perhaps the rejected maidens are drained of their blood for wine and then turned into these mindless ghoul creatures while these three candidates transform into vampiric BOWs. And also, the maiden not being able to see a reflection in the mirror is another allusion to Dracula. This implies that the maiden of the demo has already been rejected and is trying to escape to avoid being drained of her blood. Anyway, this concept is similar to the original goal of the progenitor virus. Those with incompatible genes are reduced to either mindless drones or killed outright, and the chosen ones gain various deadly abilities. It's much like the Wesker Project's prototype virus 
in which the incompatible Eleven were killed outright, with Alex failing to adapt completely, and Albert adapting fully and gaining supernatural abilities. After all, this was Spencer's lifelong mission, and take a look at these iconic Spencer Lion emblems in the wine room and several other locations, and even on the coffin here, which also carries the family crest. These are the same lion emblems that were built into the doors of the Spencer Mansion in Remake. These three also have strange red jewels on their necks, which some have compared to Jill's mind control device in RE5. This same symbol is shown on a woman in a painting on one of the shelves of the dungeon. This woman could possibly be Mother Miranda, depicted with the iconography of the Virgin Mary. The red jewels seem to indicate the inner circle of Mother Miranda, perhaps worn by candidates of the aforementioned experiment. The three candidates could also be completely separate from Alcina's daughters. Notice how in this file, the woman who slices up the maid's face is named Daniela, which matches none of the three candidates' names. This implies one of two things. The first is that Daniela is one of Alcina's daughters, and the three candidates have nothing to do with their daughters. The second is that the three candidates are Alcina's daughters, and there are more women that manage the castle in addition to them, with one being named Daniela. And pay close attention to this theme of being imprisoned, both in the Maiden demo and in Bathory's modus operandi. In the Dracula novel, the very circumstance of being imprisoned in a castle run by women is described by Jonathan Harker in his journal. The castle is a veritable prison, and I am a prisoner. I am alone in the castle with those awful women. Mina is a woman, and there is naught in common. They are devils of the pit. The same prisoner concept not only represents the relationship between Alcina's daughters and the maiden of the Ari village demo, but between her daughters and Ethan as well. Again suggesting that Ethan Winters is almost playing a parallel part to Jonathan Harker in the Dracula novel. This only begs the question, could Mia possibly be playing a role inspired by Mina Harker, the spouse of Jonathan? Everything we've seen between these two so far is characterized by disharmony and suspicion, especially from Ethan towards Mia. Think back to how in the early Ari Village trailers, Mia keeps telling Ethan to quit being so paranoid, which is a recurring line in both of the first two trailers. It's just a local tale. Quit being so paranoid. She also expresses a sudden interest in European folklore meaning that it was probably her wish to move closer to this isolated village. In the Dracula novel, Jonathan suffers through similar communication failures with Mina, with Mina slipping in and out of a trance. To hide her intentions, she tries to reassure her husband that nothing is wrong. Why? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Come. As it turns out, Mina Harker is being mind-controlled by Dracula after he both bites Mina and feeds her with his own blood. A similar type of telepathy could be possessing Mia right at the beginning of Ari Village. The Countess could be using her to draw Ethan and the baby closer to the village, and knowing of this, Chris shoots her and confiscates her child. Towards the end of the Dracula novel, there is a nighttime scene in which the Brides of Dracula mock her teasing that she will soon completely succumb to Dracula's curse and become the fourth sister, or the fourth bride of Dracula. They smiled ever at poor Madame Mina, and pointed to her. Come, sister. Come to us. Come. Mia seems susceptible to a similar fate in Ari Village as Mina Harker in the Dracula novel. Capcom could very well entertain the idea that Mia is the fourth daughter of Countess Alcina, or even Mother Miranda, and this would also tie into the Book of Shadows folktale. The Resident Evil Twitter recently posted this, stating that such an eerie tale is questionable as a bedtime story. Perhaps Mia is being telepathically commanded to introduce the baby to the story of her and her own mother. Mia may be the daughter that broke free of her mother's grasp that would return with a fresh child to this particular location. Perhaps the ceremony itself is a homecoming to the village 
as a planned blood ritual for Mia's baby. This may be the same process that these candidates in the game file are going through. Earlier on, we discussed how Bathory's victims were young girls that she lured in from the surrounding village, and how Alcina seems to be doing much of the same. The Dracula novel features a very similar relationship between the wealthy Count Dracula and the Siskani people. The Siskani is a rural community of gypsies and peasant folk who serve their noble, or boyar. The Siskani obeyed Dracula as their ruler, transporting his coffin around in the daylight by using their Romani carts, which, by the way, is the same type of cart that the Duke uses to set up shop. The Siskani even defend Dracula from the vampire hunters in the final encounter of the novel, wielding knives and guns. This closely mimics the relationship between Mother Miranda and the gypsy folk of Ari Village, and the same themes are present in Los Illuminados of Ari 4. Both Ari 4 and Ari Village revolve around the theme of superstitious village folk carrying out the sinister commands of their ruler. The Siskani serve Dracula in the same way. These Siskani are peculiar to this part of the world. There are thousands of them in Hungary and in Transylvania, who are almost outside all law. We discussed earlier how the Brides of Dracula feast on the blood and flesh of children, starting with the first time they encounter Jonathan Harker. Starving, they ask, are we to do with nothing tonight? And the Count drops a bag with an abducted child to feed the brides. There's a sickening moan that emerges from the bag. Later in the novel, a devastated mother appears at the gates of Dracula's castle, begging and pleading for her child back. She is the mother of the kidnapped child, and the child was kidnapped by the Siskani. This once again fits the heinous methods of Elizabeth Bathory and also provides context for another recent tweet from the Resident Evil Twitter. There are darkened portions of this text, but the most important part reads, noted recent tracks and blood along the route. Signs indicate dragging bodies. Whatever this society is called in Ari Village, much like the Siskani defend Dracula with their lives. They kidnap children for the brides to feed on, which is likely what is going on here in this vial, with a bit of Bathory-inspired blood ritual mixed in, implying that all abductees are probably female. The last thing to mention here is the Dimitrescu coat of arms. I'm going to dissect this into two separate elements, the rose and the cross swords. The rose is yet another prominent symbol in Dracula, namely in Van Helsing's arsenal of anti-vampire charms. In the novel, Van Helsing places a wild rose over the coffin of a vampire to keep it from rising again, which is funny considering the rose emblem is on the coffin in Ari Village as well. This rose may also symbolize the winemaking techniques of the Dimitrescu house, as flowers and their berries are often fermented into wines. The crossed swords, on the other hand, hold a strong resemblance to a very specific type of umbrella emblem, the UBCS, or the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasures Service, founded by Sergei Vladimir. This emblem has the crossed swords over the shield as well. Whether it has any significant ties to House Dimitrescu is yet to be uncovered. So, do you believe Alcina is inspired by Elizabeth Bathory? Do you think Mia is luring Ethan and their child into the hands of Mother Miranda? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this in-depth analysis video, feel free to check out my personal channel. The link is in the description. Another RE Village analysis will be coming to Residents of Evil sometime soon. Next time, Let's dive into the four houses and the village map in great detail. Until then, be sure to keep a wild rose with you should you ever come across a resting vampire.